Be right back after this thing. I didn't know you could do air kazoo. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> right, man, so many talents. You are so talented. Now, if you go back a page here, um, we can. Oh, there's the home page. Let me go to the first part that you will see. Portugal Immigrant Network. This is a a side project of of the Good Morning Portugal Endeavour where we want to talk to people from the other nationalities. Uh, we're very American and British over here. There's a, we have a Swede, um, and we have somebody who used to live in Finland who is actually Canadian. So we've got a smattering of, of sort of, of, of global of global people. I'm going to call them globalists. Hopefully you haven't got a smattering of globalists. We've got people from all over the globe. Uh, and we spoke to Santosh from Nepal. But look at all these other countries. This is a top 20 of migration into Portugal, Brazil. And we'll talk about our Brazilian friends in just a moment. United Kingdom, Cap Verde, who we just mentioned. Romania, Ukraine. If you hear your country being mentioned here, do come and talk to us on the show. Italy, China, France, India, Angola, Nepal, Guinea-Bissau, Spain, Germany, Sao Tome, Principe, uh, Netherlands, Bangladesh, Venezuela, Bulgaria, Pakistan, Moldova, Belgium, Sweden, Russia, United. Look at Ishtadosh Unidosh right there at number 18 of the 20, Mozambique and Poland. And it is amazing, James, isn't it? All this rich diversity of people moving to Portugal, not yet fully reflected, I, I think, in, within our community. So please, yes. would you elucidate, I don't even know if I use that word correctly, on... Right on why I would participate with this particular feature thing showing us here. What do you mean? Why, why would people come up and talk well, to us about it? No, for me personally, I'm not clear what it is. Like, why would I want to be a part of this? I think it'd be very informative to people who aren't already, because I've seen it several times. I just haven't gone to look at it, so I don't know the specifics. I'm just providing... I'm taking Louise's spot and providing you with an opportunity to talk a bit more about so, why know, would someone want to participate with this? All right. So the, from the from the top, then uh, the idea of the Portugal Immigrant Network is okay. This this is our like our mission statement, if you like. The Portugal Immigrant Network. The pin is hoping to represent individuals and national national identities of foreigners coming into Portugal. Our intention is to support people to enjoy their new life in Portugal so that they can integrate successfully and ultimately make a positive impact, a sensitive and appropriate impact on the new culture into which they're coming. So basically, the I mean, you know, Good Morning Portugal is all about coming to Portugal and living a, a great life here and enjoying what Portugal has to offer and supporting each other in doing that. And we are aware from time to time that we have an impact as incomers into the country. And I think that's something that's worthy of a conversation. And you, I mean, management is too probably too strong and um officious a word for it but i think talking about it and being aware of it is really useful and that and i think you can't have a conversation about this without including all the voices of the communities who are coming into portugal yes. and when i first started thinking and talking about this i was really aware that we don't really know many people from those other cultures this is a very particular kind of experience that we have here and again i don't want you know i'm not knocking that i don't it's not it's, it's not a matter of difficulty or negativity i mean we are who we are here and we would welcome other and additional voices in this so in this. i hear the vision yep and i like the vision i'm in yep. alignment with it but i don't know what the mission is i don't know how, what i'm going to do what am i going to oh. do what are you is this like another good morning portugal is it a YouTube channel. Oh, no, no, it's, it's, how, how does this work that's what i don't oh, hear in the, in okay. the vision. ultimate ultimate vision then would be to have some sort of um, working group or a steering group or a panel of people from these various countries. And one out, one outpouring or expression of our work would be to have a, an annual festival where we celebrate the diversity of the cultures that we're talking about with the food and the drink. I used to do something called uh, the community stage at the Respect Festival in my local city. Did it for about seven or eight years, I think. And there were many stages at this festival. Uh, and I, I was in there uh, emceeing the community stage. And there are people from all over the world and, and different parts of the city from different groups. And they would come and do a sort of party piece, if you like. 
And I, uh, something like that, that celebrates the, all the different cultures coming to Portugal with music and food and drink. That would be and, an ultimate vision of this, of this uh, one great expression of it. Another yeah. would be representation to the government. See, this might already exist. I don't know if it exists or not, James. But well, how do you I imagine don't... the interaction between the annual festivals? What's going on in the meantime between the community or whatever is being established by this? What would I be doing if I was if I said, "Oh, I like this idea. I'm I want to participate somehow." What would my participation look like to you? Well, I, I think you. If let's say you became the American representative, um, which would be quite an interesting particular job to have. I don't know if I want that job, but go ahead. Well, I'm, not, I'm not sure many people would. Can you imagine? Because there'd be quite, there'll be quite a lot of interesting discussions within the American community alone, I think. Would you mind speaking for all people that are like you? Well, it would take a special kind of person yes. who doesn't just kind of impose their own view of what it is to be American, but is representative of their community. And and I, I, I just think it would be fantastic to have community representatives break bread together and at times they could step up and be helpful to the portuguese government for example as a representative body i don't know if there's a you know my my research so far tells me that there isn't a representative body of immigrants generally speaking who can speak on behalf of immigrants to the government i think that would be quite a useful thing could be for sure yeah and you know th th there are there are groups of people who come together set up petitions and complain about ceph and whilst that might need doing, it's like it would it would be a shame if that's the only representation we have of em immigrants <laughs> moaning about the immigration service, which, you know, I'm not saying it shouldn't be moaned about. But wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if that if there was a broader mission for that group of immigrants that were, was also hel helpful as well as critical? Of so how would we interact? All these members that join, well, how would we? It's going to be one hell of a, um, a Zoom call, isn't it? Uh, you know, uh, that, and I th think that's how it's going to be at the beginning. It's going to be people okay. coming forward and saying, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to speak on behalf of my Brazilian community, American community, Polish community. And we just we see how it goes. We see how it goes. And it has a resonance of the United Nations about it, doesn't it? And the last thing I want it to be is a bureaucratically heavy, heavy going, deeply political thing. There were, those things probably already exist and find themselves in the sort of trouble that they you might imagine they would. I, I, I think it, it might, and I don't know. I'm just using formats that I've seen through expats and through Good Morning Portugal. Yes. It's beginning to sound something like uh, a weekly or a monthly gathering of representatives on yeah. uh, a visual video network of some Correct. kind. Correct. Correct. Okay. And then we, and then of course, you know, with those sorts of things, it's like, well, we got to meet somewhere. We got to meet. We got to meet in Lisbon and have and have dinner together. Yes. Or maybe someone you know has a center where they you know we can get around a table and talk and see where this might go, and um, if if I'm involved with it, I'm hoping there will be food, drink, and music, <laughs> and rock and roll, <laughs> rock and roll as, as a as a major part of it because I can't think of a better like you you had a taste of this yesterday didn't you at Communities uh -huh. United. They've got it right, I think, with the, with how to bring people together and how. Well, to they've got it right for how to bring uh, immigrants together. Yes. And include Portuguese in terms of provision of food and and who they support. For right. me, it's like I would love to see at least as many Portuguese people here as there are English speaking or or people, primarily Brits and Americans so far. And I know yeah. they're trying to do that; they're trying to grow. But yeah. if this was my vision, it's like, oh yeah, I'd love to see a much fuller integration of the local people as well as the people who have moved here for this amazing cause of raising money for local or uh, organization portuguese organizations that that need support so it's a yeah. great cause it is it is and it's a great model uh and um you know the um, and of course we should work together with them as well you know that's i i, I was um is it joe mack who's part of that i can't remember the other chap's name but you know I, I have spoken to them behind the scenes i'm looking forward to going to one of their events and i think they've they have delivered a fantastic model for integration and then on top of that, we can bring in more nationalities, can't we? And Dougie asked what he says is a silly question here, which I think is a great question. Has anyone asked Portuguese people what they think of this massive influx of immigrants into their country? And there's a couple of things there. It is a massive influx of immigrants. 
And that's another part of what this Portugal immigrant network should be. When you're faced as a country with a massive influx of immigrants, there will be challenges and problems. And I, I would say, oh, and misunderstandings and prejudices and all that that brings, with that, you know, that, that's no secret, is it? It's just obvious in, in the world of human affairs. And at this time in history where people are moving en masse, um, people from all different backgrounds, all different countries, that is not an easy thing to manage. And I think it's managed better if people have conversations. So that's the first bit, Doug. And, and you're right to, to make the comment, it's a massive influx of immigrants. It is quite mind boggling when you think about what the Portuguese people are facing in, 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 in terms of inward migration into their country. Then on the other, the other part of your question, which isn't silly at all, I think it's a great question. Has anyone asked Portuguese people? So my, yes, I, I haven't asked, well, I do ask Portuguese people from time to time, but there's no official way of having that conversation apart from an off the cuff one in a cafe. What do you think about all these people coming over to your country? Well, I quite like it or I don't like it. And that could be scaled up, I think, into something more meaningful, because if there are challenges, again, the best way is to address them, talk about them. And, you know, from our point of view, nothing about us without us. If, if, if people want to talk about the impact of migrants, why not talk about that directly to the migrants? If we haven't formed a body or a whatever, an association, a group that could manage that, it would make the conversation more difficult, I think. So that's another part of this. So thank you for asking what seemed um, a, uh, a, a silly question. I don't think it is at all. Another silly question, how, how exactly how massive is this influx? Um, I Well, that's, yes. I don't know the numbers in terms of the totals. I'm just familiar with the American influence, which everyone thinks is, oh, right. the Americans, like uh, we're like 1% of you all are. the immigrants. I mean, it's a tiny number percentage-wise, yes. but I don't know what the total from every country coming in is. Well, when, when if we ever get around to talking about Brazilians, and we might have to carry this over, but if we talk a little bit about Brazilians coming into Portugal, um, you'll see that it's a very considerable population. And of course, it's slightly different because, it, it, you know, Brazilian people are part of Portugal, a form, former colony, and have a slightly different relationship, you might say, to like the Brits or, or, or the Americans. Um, and it's a great question, Joel, because massive is one of those emotive terms, isn't it? You start talking about a massive influx. You talk about, you know, tides and, you know, the, the what emotive. What do you mean by like, massive is a great place to start? Isn't it? It really, yeah. it really is. And, you know, that, again, leads back to talking about it and uh, challenging sort of prejudices, preconceptions and so on. And again, another, you know, to repeat myself, what better way to do that than over a pint, <laughs> some Something with chips and rice and some music in the background. That, that, I would that recommend would be... doing it at the beginning if we're going to include pints. Right, <laughs> <laughs> connectors. The longer lovely. you go, the less productive it's going to be, I believe, if we continue to consume the pints. <laughs> Lovely, silly questions here. Can we have pints? First silly question. <laughs> and what is and massive? When should you have a conversation in relation to the pints? <laughs> like, what did you just? What did you talk about? I can't remember. We need to meet again. <laughs> That's right. Tonight. Right. <laughs> so there we go. There's the back. I don't know if I've uh, addressed your your inquiry and that kind of setup there, James. With yeah, it, it helped a lot because I couldn't I couldn't see beyond the vision. You know, yeah, the vision is like, oh, that sounds good, but what what does that look to me look like to me on a Friday night? Like, what am I? How is it going to operate? So, having an existing model to refer to and saying yes, it's something along that line helps me understand a lot. It's yeah. very much, uh, at least, what I'm imagining in my mind now. Um, some of the webinars that expats does uh, addressing people who are interested in moving and providing experts or providing people who have done it to, sh to share. So your membership, uh, the international representatives would be sort of a panel of some sort. And then the viewers could view it to hear what's being talked about and participate at some level with comments or questions along that line. That That's kind of what it looks like in my head now. And I didn't have any of that before we talked. So that helps a yes. lot. Thanks. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, good. Um, Stephen Wells makes a good point. You're an English language channel. No question about that. We do our best anyway. Uh, that is, uh, you know, notwithstanding hyperbole and anemone and uh, seagulls, uh, that is predominantly what you will attract. And, uh, yeah, you know, you have to kind of not draw the line somewhere, but, you know, there are certain contextual things that are givens. And that this is an English language channel. No question about that. And that is, you know, predominantly how... It's a foundational thing from which other things will follow. Yes. Uh, and, and you make a good point, Nubian. Uh, English is an international language and many races are represented but have unique experiences. So I think we kind of do have to say, yes, we are an English-speaking uh, channel, which we are. And a lot of our conversations will be, <laughs> most of our conversations will be in English. And we'll do our best to reach out in the best possible way. But well, you know, there's only so much you can do. Right? To Nubianet's point, um maybe it's a function of privilege or a certain lack of awareness uh, or maybe people are more aware than I think they are, but it's almost by default that the English speaking nations of the world lucked out in Europe because yeah, right. it's sort of the default language. And yeah. it's not just because of Brits and Americans or other, or Australians, or other English speaking people. It's a way in which, a French person can talk to a Spaniard, can talk to a Swedish person all at the same time. And they yeah. said, let's use English. Yeah. So while it is an English language channel, it doesn't make it exclusive to only people who speak English as What's their native that? language. Yeah. We, you know, if for anyone who wants to get involved and English isn't their first language, or they would they might say about themselves, I don't speak very good English. That wouldn't stop them having a relationship with our community as as, as our right. But it may stop them from feeling like they could join. Because there, there is a, a, yeah. a lot of uh shyness around yeah. speaking language that's not yours. I mean, yeah, we know sure. uh, those of us trying to learn Portuguese we know that. Language, yeah. which know that. So someone may say, oh, yeah, I understand, but, you know, I don't want to look like a fool or I don't do it enough or I don't feel like I would fit in whatever things they might do because of the language. That's a, a valid point. Yeah. It's well, like it's when you do a, a phone call in people, it's like, oh, no, I'm too exposed. You know, I, I don't want to interrupt. They have all these things that get in between you, uh, them and you making the contact. So we'll yes. do that. We filter ourselves when oftentimes we don't need to. Well said. Well said. My my point, says Stephen, is that most people will be Googling in their own language. Yeah. And, you know, all we can do, Stephen, on this is like try and reach out. You know, that's 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 the best I can do. And I understand some of the limitations. You know, let's let's it, if, if and when it comes to a festival then it shouldn't be so much of an issue. If you're calling an English speaking YouTube channel, a live stream, then that is going to be very obvious that, you know, that's going to be the common language and a useful, a competency and it will be a useful sort of benchmark or basis for a conversation. But when we come to having a festival, it's not so important, is it? Because we'll have the languages of food, we'll have the languages of drink, we'll have the languages of music uh, to refer to as well. And there's a sad lack of that on the live stream. For sure. Well, that's a primary aspect of, uh, I, I apologize, I keep forgetting the name, the organization we've been talking about that I attended. Yeah. The, the music is the thing, the, the, the reason this group formed was yeah. because they knew people would come together around the music. So they would feature the music and everything else happens as a result of that motivation. Yes. It flows from those universal languages, doesn't it? So, yes. yes, well said. Okay, uh, let's go. By way of making sure, what I'll do is I'm going to delay my conversation about um, the question that was raised about um, by Ocarisma about my somewhat flippant um, conversation about um, the colonies before Portuguese uh, colonial behaviour, we'll call it. So we'll, 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 we'll move that and I will be here at latest till 10.30 and we'll talk a little bit more than uh, Joao de Nord about what we could, what, you know, could be called massive. Because I think it is, I, 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 let's not use emotive terms, but I think it's significant. Let's call it significant. And let's not, let, and let's be specific about that. Uh, and if we look at that chart again, um, it, how massive is this? And I know you're using massive in inverted commas as a way of, you know, sort of decoding that and understanding it. Um, 2020 figures then, how massive is it? Uh, we're talking about uh, Brazilians at 100 and just under 184,000. 
Brits at uh, 46,000, uh, Cape Verdeans at 36, Romanians 30,000. I, I, I think that's significant. And you make the point as well, you know, the, the Americans don't even make the top 20. They actually did in 2020, and it was nearly 5,000 uh, Americans back in 2020 moving to Portugal. And I understand that's doubled in the last two or three years. We're still waiting for some new figures. I think those are the latest figures. And you can see, can't you, Americans are perhaps the most uh, uh, obviously introspective and verbal about their impact. And that's why we get this skewed sense of concern, I think. About the well, Americans. it's also interesting to look at the total number. Right? Yes. Because when we break it down to place by place, it reduces it, obviously. But if you yes. say influx of immigrants, you're talking about every single one of those numbers. I don't know what that total is. But yes, that's going to be significant as a total. Yes. But you, even the Brazilians, at, what is that? Uh, 180, that's... 184,000. Well, let, let's let's start there. Let's let's let's, let's begin our conversation about our Brazilian uh, colleagues, neighbours, uh, expats, immigrants, foreigners. Um, start and I, and sorry if this is a bit basic for some people, but I think it's quite a useful context. Uh, and and this is probably what I'll do as a as a profile for all of the of our fellow immigrants coming into Portugal as subsections of the Portugal immigrant network on the website. Um, Brazil officially the federative. Republic of Brazil, as its official title, is the largest country in South America and in Latin America. Brazil is the world's fifth largest country by area and the seventh most populous. Its capital is Brasilia and its most populous city is Sao Paulo. The federation is composed of the union of 26 states and the federal district. It is the only country in the Americas to have Portuguese, there you go, as an official language, is one of the most multicultural and ethnically diverse nations due to over a century of mass migration from around the world. The most populous Roman Catholic majority country. There's a little bit of um, an introduction to Brazil from uh, Wikipedia there. One news um, item that I found is from America's Quarterly. Um, and I, do, I don't want to just read loads of statistics. <laughs> I, I do want to have a conversation. And that is the beginning of this, OK? And there are some links to um, the, the Wikipedia entries for Brazilians in Portugal, Brazil-Portugal uh, relations. And obviously, this is a rich theme and lots under the surface when you when you look. The Brazilian community in Portugal, there's a link to that. And a very interesting uh, article, which we might have a look at, is why, where, and what kind of houses are Brazilians buying in Portugal. From this article from America's Quarterly then, uh, in 2021, a staggering 17% of Brazilians who traveled abroad did not return a record high. Um, so that tells you something about Brazilian migration generally. The number of Brazilians legally residing in Portugal, for example, recently reached a new record of a quarter of a million. And now, an important, important distinction is legally residing. Uh, I know in the right. United States, there's a lot of emphasis on people being illegal or undocumented. From yeah. what I hear, there are many Brazilians that haven't gone through the process of being official residents. Yeah. But that gets confusing because, as I understand it, they're invited and welcome. They can just come over here and be here. And I don't mean to be incentivized by saying they, but I'm just trying to you. make it as simple as possible. <laughs> yeah. So then that gets even more difficult. It's like, okay, here's a group of a thousand people from Brazil who arrive. Half of them have done the visa work or whatever is necessary to become official. And the other yeah. half come because they say you can come anytime you want. Yeah. So then how do you... My point mostly is how, how do you uh, accumulate the statistics? Because those yeah. those numbers are important. What do they mean? Again, yeah. what do the numbers mean is another question in an intelligent conversation. Yes. Well, when that's you right. The I, you know, that... Brazilians, that's not even the, the, the number that's on the screen, uh, the 180,000. That's not even 2% of the entire population of the country. So now we're talking, what is massive? Yeah. How many immigrants does it take to impact Be massive. a country, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, is it 2%, not, it's less than 2%. So, well, the, you know, Americans... Another way, another way of looking at this, James, uh, at, the, at this point, is if someone says to you, it's ma like if a Portuguese person says to you, um, I think people coming, this is a massive amount of people coming into the country. I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to say it's not? Are you going to say, what do you mean? Yes, I'm going to ask them, what do you mean by exactly, massive? That's exactly. the first question. Yeah, the argument for me is not about whether it is massive or not. 
It's what are people experiencing? What is what is behind what they're saying? Well, because and I, you can't. I can't even answer the question if I don't know what it is I'm addressing. Right. Yes, what do exactly. you mean by massive? Oh, yes. five or six people. Well, then, yes, it is a massive thing based yes. on that definition. It's hugely massive. Yes. But if it's, you know, 85 million, it's like, oh, no, it's not massive at all. So I can't even address the question till I understand what the question is. Exactly. And that's why this is a conversation and not a thesis that is going to be delivered. Yeah. With like, here it is. We've decided on the Portugal Immigration Network, it's like this. More so, how is it? Not it's like this. And, you know, we've all got our prejudices. No, no question about that. We've all got our, um, you know, blind sides in our thinking and our behavior. And here's an opportunity to have a look at that, shine, shine some light on it. Now, on that, on that um, note of massive, um, if you consider that um, the, the Portuguese population is, what, 10 and a half million, it, it's something between 10 and 10 and a half million, a quarter of a million people is quite significant, isn't it? Furthermore, um, you know, they, 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 that, that number is increasing. The actual number of Brazilians in Portugal is likely half a million. Um, it says here in this particular article any, anyway, including those who live there illegally and the thousands of Brazilians who also hold European passports and don't register um, as Brazilians. They, they would be, appear as other kinds of Europeans, which I guess we should also say something about the limitations of nationality, right? Because some people are dual nationals. <laughs> some people think, well, why are we fighting over boundaries and flags anyway? And your T-shirt, your famous T-shirt, <laughs> I live here. You, I'm a you are here. <laughs> That's right. And we can take it all too seriously. But, uh, you know, there's a balance to be struck, isn't there? You can take it too seriously or you can not look at it at all. And you can find out something really helpful somewhere in the middle, I think, you know, in between the extremes. So, well, One um, of the questions that pops up for me is once I'm clear on what the numbers are and what percentage they represent, yeah, because I know nothing about immigration. I know nothing about the impact of numbers of people on the workings of the nation that they're now occupying. Right. So I would, I would want to know that. Like, so it is half a million people significant in a population of ten million in Portugal. Yes. Is that a significant number? Chan I, I believe it probably is. So then, what are the potential impacts of that kind of a number? On the country, I need to know those things before I could have an intelligent conversation about what we need to do about it. And your experience will be different where you, wherever you go, right? So if you live in the yes. country, so you're like Pete Bleach, and there's that nice Dutch couple down the road, and there are some really nice Brazilians you met in the village. That's very different, isn't it, to living in in a Lisbon, um, you know, uh, neighbourhood where it will be very different indeed, of course. Yes. So, you know, the, notwithstanding all these kind of gray areas and nuances, there were, I think there are some very interesting things that are coming up already in our conversation here, uh, including uh, what is weird to me. Oh, uh, Stephen, actually, thank you for doing the math. Uh, 600,000 then of the, of, uh, that's thank just you. a top 20, by the way. Uh, what's weird to me is how so many immigrants crave the authentic Portugal, yet fundamentally each year, the influx is diluting the authenticity, it's scary. What can you do about that? That is that is how migration works, isn't it? And human beings have been one of, one of the things I heard James on this on this YouTube uh, video I watched last night. It's very academic, but was the fallacy of modernity when it came to migration, and they they, they had this. I think academics who work in migration had this realization that just because they started measuring migration since the industrial revolution. That doesn't mean that's when it actually began. <laughs> and we do have this idea, don't we, that people started moving about for work and so on after the Industrial Revolution. Uh, I, I honestly believe, again, because I, I trust science, that migration started as soon as we got upright and started walking. Yes. Well, that even was before the first that, there's one talk bipedal, humanoid type yes. person. Yes. When we, once we got feet and started walking, that's when we started migrating. So. And, then the, and then it got turbocharged, didn't it, with the first family argument. Right. I'm not staying around I'm here. Out of here. <laughs> Eat my dust, and thus began began the first personal migration. Dad, you always think you know everything. <laughs> I'm leaving. That's right. You know everything. You go and start your own house. What is you under my house? It's my under my Celtic thatch roof. 
It's my <laughs> rules. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. I'm going I'll go to go build a thatch house of my own. That's right. There you go. Migration, pre modernity, uh, right there. So, good point, Doug. And what you, there's nothing you can do about that, is there, except kind of as an individual move to where you're personal tastes are best suited perhaps well, if you're and again you're talking about perspective and point of view i mean you could yeah. say we're diluting the culture or we could, you could say the world is evolving into something different and 100 right. years from now it's not going to look the same as it does <laughs> not is it and we can also actively preserve the things we like yes we, as part if something's that. important then we hang on to it and i think the portuguese are great with that they have many yes. many very old traditions that they just keep alive it Every takes mindfulness. Yeah. It comes back to mindfulness. Which bits do you want to keep? Which bits do you want to get rid of? And it takes a mindful look at those to make the decisions, right? Well, uh, well, people deciding, I mean, not even necessarily discussing it, it's just assuming we're going to have this festival because yeah. it, it, we've always had it and it's important. And when it stops being that important, yeah, then it will fade away into something or nothing, something else or nothing. Yeah. Isn't it funny? It's all relative. It's this it sounds like an Einstein quote, doesn't it? Um, That's James, a fact. Even. <laughs> when your income tax goes up by two percent, you notice it. <laughs> when your temperature goes up by two percent, you, you're down. So yeah, it's not the size of the percentage. I'm just curious how much the percentage needs to be to start having that kind of an impact. Yeah. Um, so. Joel Denort says six hundred thousand is twenty percent of the entire population. Now that you know, you could call that massive, but one in five people being a foreigner is. Is a conversation worth having? Is how I'll put it. I won't. I won't I'll, I'll downgrade it from massive, but I would say it's significantly impactful. Without wanting to sound too uh, pedantic and, and pathetic, uh, current population says Rao as well is closer to twelve million, and still, you know, that may change it to one in six or seven people is a foreigner on that basis. But it, it's it's fascinating. And yes, good question. Where is Antonio F? To give us <laughs> when we need him most. <laughs> the reverse needed when now. When somebody shows up, we'll just all in all caps say, "Where were you?" Yes, we've got a we had questions for you, Antonio. Where were How you? Dare you not be here? <laughs> Use, you're our Portuguese guy. Um, using the burrito principle in mind, 600,000 will be 20% impacting the 80% of the population. Might that be seen as massive? Um, there are a lot. There's a lot to that. It might be seen as massive, and it's also like what is happening. What's happening in our experience? And you I know, would say, like you, I I would guess that 20% is significant. Like, yeah, yeah it'll make a big difference. That's <laughs> would be right. what I'd say, just right off the top of my head. Yeah. And when you're in a bar in like I was going to say Fundal, but there are a lot of foreigners there. But if you're if you're on a if you're in a remote village, it, it may not look like one in five. But if you're in a if in, in downtown Lisbon, it may look like you know you might be with four other foreigners, might you, in a certain situation, and no Portuguese people. It does vary uh, where you go. Okay, I'm wrong. Ten million. Not sure where I got that twelve million figure from. You could have changed the course of history, as well. And this is this. <laughs> these are the conversations that we're getting heated about and being absolutely certain about and polarizing. We yeah. it's like, oops, wrong number. Sorry, <laughs> it was one percent, not a hundred. Uh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Go back. <laughs> what I notice is the enclaves in Portugal. Americans gather in certain regions, but migrating people do do that. Migrating people go find their friends or their sim their reflections, don't they? Apart from the exceptions who don't want to be with those people, but they're exceptional. Uh, Germans in other spots, as lone traveller, I noticed the growing language barriers. Uh, FYI, 600,000 is 6% 6 of 10 million. Thank you. The US defines itself as a melting pot. Canada is multicultural. Portugal, well, again, you know, we can't speak on behalf of the Portuguese, we, but we do invite uh, an open conversation here. And, and to I be will... honest, you know, not, not to be making a joke out of the whole migration of humans, but the United States is one of the few uh, places uh, in the world where, again, the terms modern civilization just showed up. They just yeah. got on their boats and said, okay, we're, we're unpacking here, folks. And those boats initially came from one or two or three places, France, Spain, and England mostly, but gradually became every place on the planet. So our nation really, as many people want to say, oh, you know, it's, it's uh, white British 
colonials that are, you know are Americans. That's I totally disagree. I mean, it's a it's a nation of immigrants, forced or otherwise. Mm-hmm. So we don't have that that enclave thing so much about your nationality as we do about your race or the color of your skin or your religion. Yeah. That's where we separate in those places. You know, uh, th- th- and there were some really sort of poignant parts to this as well. Uh, when I was cycling over to get my car on Saturday morning, I drove past what is a massive like strawberry plantation, basically, on the edge of San Martino de Porto. And I drove past there and, and there were people picking uh, strawberries that morning in, in, in the heat. And it was like something from a film. And I shouted out, you know, for the people who are looking at me, I sort of, you know, waved and said, hola, bon dia. And, you know, these people waved back and there was a bloody fence in the way. And it was like suddenly a really heart sinking moment. The, the, these were poor, as, as, as far as I could tell, like poor migrants coming over to do shitty jobs that other people don't want to do. From, from their point of view, without sort of projecting too much or being patronizing as well, you know, that, that for them, as we were talking about last week uh, with Bobby, it, that might be an amazing opportunity for them from, from what they've come from. I don't know. I don't know. But I just, there was a real poignancy about cycling past uh, me of a certain kind of standing and choice in, in the matter of being a migrant in Portugal and looking into these people working in bloody boiling hot conditions, picking strawberries for the likes of me, if you like, uh, on this horrible mass agricultural facility and it looked like something from another decade frankly james and that is that's why that's another reason why we should be having this conversation because it's not not all migrants are equal we know that that we had this conversation last week and there are some shitty things going on with people yes and it's the use of and i was going to observe you know they're not exclusive they can be the same it can be yes it's back breaking pain in the ass can't stand it labor yeah. And your life is better for it because you have an income versus no income. Right. So it can be both, but it doesn't necessarily mean that doing the work for the better money, even though it's less in the United States, always much less money than, you know, American citizens will, would be making. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean uh, that it's all negative. There is the reason they're doing oh, that is, is to yes, improve their right. lives financially. Yes. And that, that in itself is kind of a sad comment. You're willing to do backbreaking labor for pennies on the dollar because it makes your life better and you're riding your bicycle by. So I get your point. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it looked like something from a movie from America, honestly, you know, from back in the day. And again, you know, this could be patronizing as well, couldn't it? Because I'm I'm just projecting my emotions and, and you know, my virtue, signal, whatever it is, I'm doing that. And, you know, I come back to the point that what would be useful is to, to be in conversation. Instead of having a fence there, is, is to be having food and drink and music with those people when they're not work, <laughs> breaking their backs working. Uh, I think they do have some downtime. They're not, you know, they're not slaves in the field. But there are people who, who are in shitty conditions here and all mm-hmm. over the world. Or doing what we like define that. as, again, if we want exactly. to be really specific, yeah. uh, it looks pretty shitty to me. <laughs> Oh, well, it's quite polarized, isn't it? It's not. Yes. It wasn't a. It wasn't a community-owned organic farm where everyone was getting stuck in to get the crop to market. And they I mean, all I've been, in, I've been in, whatever profits. Yeah, they made I've that. been in privileged like agricultural situations like that where I come from in Devon, and people are all, you know, there's hippies picking fruit and veg, getting close to the land, and they're all part of some sort of cooperative endeavor, which sounds to me a lot more. Um, appropriate and human scale and human affirming than in massive industrial facilities of fruit growing. We're Taking clearly advantage of people because of their bad situation. Exactly. And these are jobs that not everyone wants to do and fortunately don't have to, but by virtue of their birth and, yeah. and choices or whatever. In California, so- every time someone presented me with, you know, those illegal migrants are stealing our jobs i said okay well you want to pay americans to pick that lettuce and those strawberries then be willing to spend twenty dollars a strawberry and eighty dollars a head for lettuce exactly you're complaining about it it's not fair for them but if you don't want it it's like okay and and there's something in between it's something in between isn't there james you know there is there is 
you know, you, you could, you could, you know, if we had the doc here, the doc could have a very clear, I think, you know, not when to, to, to uh, stereotype his, 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 uh, well, but we could guess what, you know, a Marxist view on this might be. But in between all of that, in between the political solutions and the ideological debate we could have about this, there could just be talking to people who are in those communities and, and connecting. And that's what I think would be very effective and useful and, and something I'd, 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 I would like to do again without wanting to seem like some kind of pretentious virtue signaling twat. But anyway, I might not have, I might not have um, managed with that, but I hope people can see that uh, the intention is good. And we should we should finish, I think, today. I mean, notwithstanding perhaps the um, Portuguese ambassador's welcome um, and message to his country folk uh, here from the uh, for the resources I've put together. And I hope to do this for all countries that we've talked about and nationalities. There's an amazing demographic about uh, Brazilians moving to Portugal, which is on this page, the link for which is in the chat. And the um, is this the ambassador? It is. Oh, let's finish with this today, because I think we've opened a nice can of worms. Uh, and, a, and a sort of a, a route forward. You know, I've explained to you what I'm trying to do. I'd love to do this for every as many possible nationalities. And of course, instead of two, a, a British guy and an American guy talking about Brazilians, how about we have some Brazilian people here talking to us? Well, about and it? I always want to add and Portuguese because and Portuguese, of course, because the Brazilians are having an impact on the Portuguese as well, right? Yes. So it's it's a it's not one or the, it involves all of them. And I think everyone, yeah. as you said, not about you, but with you or whatever you said that it's like, yes, yeah. that it needs, that's the important piece. Cause I yeah. know personally some Portuguese who are, whose situations are being significantly challenged just by the fact the president invited all these Brazilians to come over. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And what so, better way to just talk about it, right? It's yes. like, it's, it, it, I think conversation is so important, giving the potential of inflammation and difficulty. I think it's really good to have the groundwork of conversation and connection between people. I found myself wondering what, what England would look like if they made a similar invitation to Americans. <laughs> All 300 good. million of you, you you're no from good. us, We're, you're from here. Yeah, you're welcome, right, you're welcome. Come Anytime. on over, feel free. Like, uh, pretty hard to imagine what that would look like. Yeah, uh, that's a fair point, John. It's not the physical labor that's shitty. No, I mean, you know, we can we can go all kind of um, what's I don't know who was doing, but you know, ennobling about the, the manual work. Of course, it's good, it's good for people um, in many ways. It's the conditions under which one does the work that's the issue. You're absolutely right. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know, like I said, I'm not always going to get this right, but I am I am bold enough to begin a conversation about it, and I won't stop. So this will be interesting, I think, James, to hear how the various ambassadors of the different different countries that we might talk about, uh, talk to their, their countrymen and women. It is with great satisfaction that I welcome all Portuguese citizens residing in Brazil, as well as, I remember all Portuguese citizens residing in Brazil, as well as all those who visit the page of the Embassy of Portugal and who accompany us on our social networks. I hope that the contents presented here are useful, help to better know Portugal and contribute to strengthen the relationship between Brazil and Portugal. Through this page uh, and, the, and the social networks, the Embassy wants to be closer to the community and use of consular services or other services, providing in particular information of a consular nature and hoping to be able to welcome suggestions and proposals which could contribute to a continuous improvement of the public services which we are keenly seeking to provide to all the citizens, institutions, and organizations that come to us. You'll find here up-to-date contents, and all nationalities, actually. The links on here are really good on the Brazilian uh, embassy website, um, on the activities we carry out on a daily basis, but also suggestions and guidelines on how other Portuguese institutions, organizations, and public services, both in Portugal and abroad, information agencies, cultural institutions, academic and sports associations of the Portuguese community in Brazil and other entities that seem equally relevant to us. I'm very grateful for the interest shown in the consultation of this information space. And I hope you continue to visit us with curiosity, interest, and regularity. Please do not hesitate to contact us whenever you need any, any additional information and do not hesitate to submit any suggestions and recommendations that you consider relevant and that may contribute to the improvement of the services we provide here. And that's Jorge Cabral, the ambassador uh, of Portugal in Brazil there. So that's the um, Portuguese, I beg your pardon, that's the Portuguese ambassador, isn't it? Uh, in Brazil there. 
Um, so I might have got completely the wrong um, end of the stick here. But I think the sentiments are useful and valuable here. I thought that was the Portuguese, uh, the Brazilian ambassador talking to his Brazilian uh, counterpart. Well, the elements of inclusion are important. They're, they're all in there. You, you would hope they would say that, right? Of invitation, those kinds of things. They're, they're important. So, yes, I guess. I agree with that part of it anyway, for sure. There we go. A nice glow from Lord Gilchrist. Hey, that's point. where you are. That's where you live, mate, allegedly. Uh, I think that is the point. It is the specific conditions that are either a productive or humane way to make a living or otherwise. And there often seems to be a race to the bottom with these things. And I will add that I, I do believe that there are a number of people who are doing that work who don't enjoy it and would rather do something else if they had that choice. Quite. Right. I don't want yeah. to say that it's a pain in the ass for everyone and it's occasionally wonderful for everybody and none of that. But the main thing for me is those of us with privilege, privilege sometimes forget that part of that privilege is a choice. We can choose to do that work or not. Yeah. If we think it's shitty work, we can go do something else. Mm -hmm. If I'm amongst those people who doesn't have that choice, this may be the only choice I have. It may be shitty work for me, but it's the only way I can make a living, which then goes to the conditions again. So, and James, and, uh, you know, we're here we are talking again about people about, about situations yes. that we don't know anything about, really, apart from our view of it, which is then turbocharged by our own experiences and prejudices. So I'm looking forward to these uh, these opening conversations. And I will now palate cleanse with one or two dad jokes. One of these has you in mind, uh, my friend. I keep forgetting that I have the right to remain silent. <laughs> Even when I'm not being arrested. That's pretty guilty. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> <laughs> we both put our hands up to that. And a neighbor asked to borrow my lawnmower. I said, sure, just don't take it out of my yard. <laughs> Feel free to use it on my grass. <laughs> and uh, this, this one had you in mind, I think. Tell me, do you do you hear voices in your head? Say no, say no. No, doctor. <laughs> um, for anyone who doesn't think they have voices in, in your head, um, the one you're having the conversation with about voices in your head are the voices. That's the voice we're talking about, yes. <laughs> That's the one we're talking about there. You, we all do. James, thank you for staying longer than usual. I've really fa found that helpful, enjoyable, and I hope it's the beginning of something very useful. Me too. Although you did skip my visual dad joke, so... I won't I do that. I don't no, 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 we don't no, need I'm, to take time to pull that out. No, I don't need that to sour taste. <laughs> lurking here. Go on. There it is. <laughs> Uh, I, I invented a, a thought-controlled air freshener. That's ridiculous. It makes sense when you think about it. <laughs> James, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you. Thank you very much. Yeah, bye for now. Thank you, everybody, who tuned in this morning. We'll see you again tomorrow. Cheers, James. Bye for now, my friend. Ciao, ciao. ciao. There's a YouTube show Full of fun facts you need to know Carl brings a bell and a member show To the GMP morning show Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind The audience will do so in kind the little vanity mixed with some insanity On the morning show with GMP Good morning Portugal and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day Hey you gumpers!